the lucky few survive the disaster, and then one by one, death comes for them all. You changed. Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, ready for my company's annual retreat. And I'm Ashley Sledge, about to go hit that balancing beam. But first, let's talk horror. And today we're going to be talking about a movie that both of us really like a lot and took us by surprise, and that is 2011's Final Destination 5. Yeah, so we kind of looked over it a little bit because we didn't really care for three or four. Um, so we went into it blind, and that's exactly what you should do as well. Um, mm -hmm. So if you haven't already, go back, watch the movie, and then come back and watch our Didn't See That Coming on it. Yes, this movie has a great twist to it that really did take us both by surprise. Luckily, this movie was not spoiled for us. Mm -hmm. We were able to see it fresh, and I think that that's really awesome, and I really hope that you guys get that chance too. So last chance, spoilers ahead. Um, the movie starts at a paper company named Presage Paper Company. Which, oddly enough, if you look up the definition for that, it means a sign or a warning that something bad is going to happen. Which is awesome. A nice little Easter egg there. Mm -hmm. And they have a couple of those sprinkled throughout the movie, which I think is really awesome. So one we debate on, but we'll get there in a second. Um, they're getting ready to go to a team building retreat. You know the feeling, guys. <laughs> um, we meet Sam, whose sales aren't great with the company, and his best friend, who is his boss, Peter. And Peter even tells him, like, uh, as your friend, love you as your boss. Got some work to do. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we meet a girl pulls up. Uh, her name is Molly. Sam excuses himself to go and talk to her. Mm -hmm. um, and... You try to figure out why her plane ticket was canceled to go to his brother's wedding. Um, they go into it. They get a little bit... A little heated. A little yeah. heated here. Um, we then cut over to meeting another sales team employee named Olivia. She gets dropped off, and then her boyfriend slash friend slash we don't really know... No, we don't know. <laughs> ...calls her back to tell her that she forgot her glasses. So, obviously, Olivia can't see... So she's got to make sure she has her glasses with her. And she hates wearing them. And okay. she hates wearing her glasses. She hates the way she looks in them. I wonder if she'll do anything to fix that. Maybe. You never know. <laughs> um, so we then we meet an intern. Her name is Candace. Mm -hmm. um, she's actually dating Peter. Um, and we, all, we meet another um, employee. He's kind of a pervert weirdo. His name is Isaac. He's with tech support. And he's constantly on the phone, like, trying to hook up with other women. Um, this is when the captain pulls up and he, he's the captain of the company and he's not really nice to his, um, any of his employees at all. But he's a fantastic actor. He's a fanta fantastic <laughs> actor for sure. But I, I do love him. Yeah. Um, so he's ready to leave right now. So Sam's like, he's running to go get the other employee that's going with them, Nathan. Um, he goes into the warehouse mm -hmm. and this is where Nathan, um, he kind of got put in charge of the workers in there. And a lot of them aren't happy because they've been there a lot longer than Nathan has. Um, one in particular, his name is Roy. He's like, I got 15 years on you. And what do you got? Four years and a, a, so a college educated degree. Yeah, from upstate. Like, he's not happy. Yeah. Um. So Sam gets Nathan out of there. They jump on the bus to go to the retreat. Um. And when you see a, a log truck. This is a total homage to Final Destination 2. So now they're driving over a bridge that is currently under construction. Uh, the bus stops. Sam cuts his finger. When it stops, he kind of leans forward, cuts his finger, making himself bleed. Mm -hmm. The radio changes to dust in the wind. Um, the wind really starts to pick up here, blowing the bridge back and forth. Sam says something is wrong um, as a construction worker is cutting concrete. Um, it causes everything to start cracking. Mm -hmm. Sam grabs Molly and everyone gets off the bus. Candace jumps over the road block to get to the sidewalk area of the bridge. As it crumbles to the water, she falls and she gets impaled on the on the top of a boat. Yeah, like the death doesn't really look the, the CGI best. CGI blood is. We got to remind everybody. We should have did this at the beginning, but this movie was filmed and it was uh, premiered in three D. Mm -hmm. Doesn't hold up as well on no. a lot of these scenes. Um, Isaac is the one who didn't get off the bus because he was in the bathroom in his office. Yeah, talking to talking another on the phone again. Yeah. Um, so when he comes out, the bus is actually falling into the water. And we watch Isaac fall with the bus off the bridge and smack into the water. Um, so Molly, she was actually able to um, go, like, balance on a beam um, between. Mm. She was re ready to balance she on a beam. balancing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she gets across 
Olivia is, she drops her glasses and someone steps on them so she can't really see. Um, so Sam grabs her and puts her on the beam. And this is where uh, Molly's on the other side, like, like come to my voice. Yeah, listen to my voice. Um, and she's trying, but she falls. And she falls into the water and you think that she's okay. She's swimming a little bit. She's swimming a little bit, but this is when a car actually falls over the bridge on top of her, killing her. So she That's didn't. That's a wrap for her. It was. Um, this is when we see Nathan, he's running, um, and there's a cable that flies off and just, boop, he's gone. Yep, he's gone. Um, and Dennis, the captain, he gets covered in hot tar and falls to his death, so. I, that's one I do like. That, I like that watching the hot good. tar cover him and then him falling to his death. I thought that was really good. Absolutely. Um, and then Peter and Sam, they both jump over to the other side where, uh, Molly is and they're kind of hanging on to like a, like a side rail. Yeah. Um, and that the rest of the bridge just crumbles. This is where you have the rebar. It falls and it impales um, Peter. And again, doesn't look the best, but you also get the half a sheet of metal falls at this point too. And it cuts Sam in half. And I love this scene, how it cuts him in half and you see his body falling to the camera, mm -hmm. but it also comes right back in and shows that this has been a premonition the whole time. So then Sam cuts his finger and the song on the radio changes to Dust in the Wind. Sam tells everyone they have to get off the bus. Everyone thinking, you know, he's lost his mind. Like, he's gone crazy. Um, Sam convinces Molly to leave with him and the rest of them end up following. Uh, not all of them, but some of them end some up getting off. Some of them off. get off, yeah. Yep. And the bridge starts to snap and the bridge crumbles apart in front of them. Uh, Peter looks at Sam and asks how he knew the survivors are now being interviewed by an FBI agent, mm -hmm. Agent Block. Um, and he thinks Sam knows more than he's letting on. Obviously, he just let all these people off as the bridge was going to collapse. So obviously, he's very skeptical about what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, he then has to let everyone go when a report comes in and chalks it up to structural damage and high winds. Yeah, which he's like, structural he's damage? Like, high winds? Yeah. Seriously? He was not having it. Um, this is when the news comes across and you find out that 86 people died. Um, 17 of them were from the, that were going to the retreat. Yeah. So only eight of the people from the retreat survived mm -hmm. our eight um, that we'll get to know a little more about. Yeah. Um, so this is when they go to the funeral. And a funny part, um, Dennis, the, the captain, the big <laughs> boss, he is giving a speech about all these people, clearly doesn't really know anything about his employees. And he's like talking about Isaac. Isaac survived. Did you just say my name? That's not funny. The people were the. I just came here with tragedies. I'm sorry. We're less of a company without people. We're not less of a family. I see dead we're less people. Of a I, I laughed out loud yeah. when we watched that part. So they're all walking back to their cars and they want to know, like, how did you know, Sam? But he's like, I don't I don't even know. Like, I just had this, this you know, vision. I had this presage. Yes. <laughs> for sure. Um, so this is when we get um, the coroner, William, Tony Todd, our guy. Our fucking guy, man. <laughs> he walks up and he says that... Um, death doesn't like to be cheated. Death doesn't like to be cheated. And Peter says, excuse me, what is that supposed to mean? And he was like, y'all just be careful now and walks away. Yeah, they're fucking creep. Yeah, fucking creep, he says. So we cut to Sam working at a very fancy restaurant. This is actually what he wants to do with his life. Mm -hmm. Sam wants to be a cook. And we find out that this is why Molly broke up with him. He was offered an internship mm -hmm. over in Paris. And she was like, "You, I can't let you put, you know, your life on hold because of me. Right. Um, you're going to end up hating me for it. You're going to end up resenting me for it eventually. You need to go to Paris and follow your dreams. And he's like, I, I'm not going without you. I'm in love with you. We all get older realize there's certain things that we can't do. So she does want him to end up resenting her. Mm -hmm. Um, now, we pan over here to Candace, who is a gymnast. A gymnast like myself. <laughs> the intern that was dating uh, Peter. And, you know, she's saying she doesn't want to do it today. But at her last practice, Peter talks her into it. You're amazing. You're perfect. You've been doing this your whole life. I know you can do it. So he tells her she's going to be fine. And she's like, you know what? Yeah, it's the last time. Coach will kill me if I don't do it. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. 
So they're in the gym and it's super hot in there. I guess the cooling system is messed up. Um, so they bring in these big fans and plug them in all over mm -hmm. um, to try to cool it down while they're fixing the cooling system. But gymnastics is, is very hard and it causes, you know, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And you're in there with no air conditioning. No. I would sweat. Yeah. You, I'd, I'd die. Yeah, for sure. Um, so they're fixing the cooling system. This is when, um, if, when you look up and you see a ceiling fan and one of the screws of it falls off of it onto the balancing beam that Candace is getting ready to get on. Before you talk about the scene, I want to say this scene ramps up the anxiety yes. to a thousand. This scene, the suspense in the scene is so well shot, so well yeah. done. Good on you guys. This was an amazing, amazing scene. So she's on the balancing beam doing her flips and stuff. Um, and those are the technical terms because I'm a gymnast. <laughs> All right, guys, I need you on the beam doing your flips and stuff. Do flips and stuff. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> Um, so she's doing her flips and she's coming just centimeters from stepping on this nail, but she doesn't. So good for her. She gets off and there's a puddle of water that's almost hitting the electricity where they, um, the electrical and it's cords. Got a, the cord has a rip in it. Yeah. So the wires are exposed. So she touches fans. that water. Electrocuted. But she misses that too. So. Death might be getting bad in his old age. Because I'm telling you this right now. Death from Final Destination 1. Wouldn't have missed these kills. No. You know, he missed her with the screw on the beam. He missed her with the water on the floor. Getting a little sloppy. Yeah. He, he should have had her two kills ago. Yeah. So she goes over to the bars and starts flipping around those um, when another gymnast gets on the balancing beam and is doing her flips. And, um, and stuff. And stuff. Her flips and stuff. Her flips and stuff. Mm-hmm. And she actually does step on the nail. Poor girl. That yeah. would hurt. Yeah. And she falls off of the beam and she hits over the gripping chalk mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> so you're such a good gymnast. I know. The chalk you put on your hands for grip when you're doing the bars. And when she does this, it the chalk, it goes in front of the fan, blowing it into Candace's face. And as she's doing this flip around the bar, she falls. And she falls into this like scorpion, like her legs over her head, her spine oh. is broken and it looks it looks awesome, honestly. It looks so cool. Killed her on impact. It killed her on impact. So now we cut back to Sam and Peter. Uh, Sam came to the gymnasium when he heard what happened. Mm -hmm. Peter, obviously, visibly very upset. You know, how could this happen to her? Uh, she's been doing this her whole life. And this is where in the background we see Tony Todd, William. He's back there. Um, but now we have the seven of them, the survivors, returning to their jobs. Um, there isn't anyone left in the office. Isaac the Creep is going through the deceased deaths. Um, which is fucked up, man. Like, like, what is wrong with you? I hate this character. Like the He's, actor, he does good he in other things. He obviously does a great him job because we hate him. I fucking hate this guy. Yes. Like, I despise him. Like, at first you actually think, like, he might be on, you know, he's looking at her picture. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you were such a freak. You know, he's just, like, a dirty person. Like, what like, is he's just wrong a with bad you? guy. Yeah. Like, not your typical serial killer bad guy, but he's bad in a different way. And he's just a bad, bad guy. Mm -hmm. Um... So now he's going through the deceased desk. He's taking money, mm -hmm. change out Just of their change. desk. Like, really? Um, then he finds a coupon that expires June 30th, 2001 for a massage parlor. That, Weird. Why, an expired coupon of right. 10 years? Like, I don't know. Um, he goes to the spa being a total creep to the receptionist, asking for an erotic massage. Does it have a happy ending? And she's like, well, this is a family place here, buddy. Yeah. So finally, she's like, you know what? I know exactly what you need. And she walks him out when an older woman comes in. You know, she puts the towel on his face. An older woman comes in and starts massaging him. And, she, and uh, what I love about this scene, and what I love about a lot of the Final Destination movies, they never go into that campy area. They know what they are, but the comedy they do, it lands. And yeah. it, this is one of the scenes where the comedy is very good. It, it really, really does work here for me. Um, so we go back to the rest of the co-workers and they decide, hey, we're the only ones left. Let's just start drinking. Let's get drunk. Yeah. So they all pull out booze. They're drinking. Um, this is when Peter, he gets really angry because, you know, he's talking about Candace and um, he throws his shot glass and breaks it. Um, the, Dennis, the manager, the boss, the big guy, the, the big captain boss, of the ship, the captain. Um, he sees this and he calls Detective Black and tells him what's going on, like what he's seen. He's like, you told me, Detective, if I see anything weird to call you, is this weird? And the detective's like, again, another scene where the comedy lands, like, should we have code names for each other? Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Hangs up on <laughs> Hangs him. Hangs up on him. Um, so we go back to Creepy Isaac. Um, at this point, he's getting acupuncture put in. 
Mm -hmm. So a bunch of needles all over his body. Um, and this is when the older woman says, okay, you sleep now for 30 minutes. And she walks out. She, she finally breaks kayfabe here and tells him, like, yeah, I speak English, yeah. buddy. I, I've understood everything you're saying. So she leaves. This is when some ash from an incense falls onto a towel and sets on fire. Um, and he's wigging out on the table. Because he's, remember, he's got acupuncture He's got needles. all these needles on mm -hmm. him. So he's wigging out on the table, causing a bolt from the table to make the table collapse. And he falls onto his, all of these needles onto his stomach. So I knew it was going to happen too. And I still, I don't like this stuff. Look, like she's the I gore, do. the gore whore here. Yeah. I don't like, especially like needles, eyes, stuff like oh, that. Oh, that's so awesome. I don't like it. I'm, I'm like, oh, I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. And it happened. And I was like, oh no, that sucks. But it couldn't happen to a better yeah, fucking guy. He, he deserved it. Yeah. Um. So the fire, it starts, uh, it, it gets bigger. Um. A jug of alcohol. Well, like his phone vibrates, making a candle fall onto a jug of alcohol. Because he had to go back for his phone. Yep. And so it spreads. All Just missing him, he like um, jumps back and hits the wall. And so the fire didn't get him. But death is is still doing his damn thing. Death is still doing his thing. Um, and there is a Buddha statue on a um, shelf, and the shelf breaks. It falls, and it crushes his head. And I love this death because he had it coming. Mm -hmm. Not only because of the person he was, but when he walks in, he smacks the Buddha statue and lay off the egg rolls, whatever he says, something racist you and stupid. You don't do that to Buddha. You don't do that to any, you know what, even if you don't believe in a religion or whatever, don't mock other people's beliefs. No. I think that's really, really shitty. So at that point, I had already wanted this guy to die in the first five minutes of seeing him, but this really pushed me over the edge with everything, you know, the way he steals from the dead, the way he belittles women, the way he mocks religion, you know what, you're done. I got no, nothing for you. But, and we do see Sam now asking Molly to go to Paris with him and she seems like she wants to, but she's still got some reservations. Mm -hmm. She's reserved about it. Um, this is when Peter shows up to tell them about Isaac's death. Um, the three of them go to the scene, and once again, William is there. Um, he, Sam asks, why is he following him? Why, why are you are following always us? always at all the death scenes? Yep. He turns around, and on his jacket, it says coroner. So this is where we learn that he's a coroner. Um, and, he, you know, what did you mean by death doesn't like to be cheated? William says, I've seen this before. A few lucky people survive a disaster, and then one by one, death comes for them all. Um, you shorted death on the bridge. Uh, Pete says, so if we kill someone, we get their life. We're changing places with them. Um, William says, I don't make the rules. I just clean up after the mess. Now, obviously he's seen this before. Mm -hmm. You know, he's seen it with our boy, Devin Sawa. Sawa love. Um, and I love the fact that they bring him back to tell these people the stories that he has seen before. Right. To try to warn, to be a premonition in a positive way this time. Mm -hmm. But we got our dude, Tony Todd, telling people to kill people now. Uh, Tony... Go back to being Candyman and doing it yourself, my friend. <laughs> um, so Sam remembers that in his premonition, Molly never actually died. No. She made it across the beam over the catwalk, and she was safe. Right. So. Yeah, so this this kind of upsets Peter. Like, you saved her, but not, you know, not us. Like, we, I didn't deserve to, I don't deserve to live. In that split second in your premonition, you know what I mean? Like Yeah. Like, and Candace didn't deserve to live, but Molly did. You know, he he was mad about this. Um, it's hard to say he's a douchebag because he's going through a lot of grief and people handle grief differently. Right. But he's a douchebag. Yeah. It's hard to say it, but I'll say it. He's being <laughs> a douchebag. Um, so this is when Sam, Molly, and Nathan, they want to go warn Olivia about all the stuff they just learned. Where's she at? She's at a laser eye surgery place. So she won't need glasses anymore. Crazy, mm. right? Crazy. Um, she, so that's what she's doing. She wants to have, a, um, laser eye surgery, so she doesn't have to wear glasses anymore. She's super nervous about this procedure. It sounds like she had already been there once and, like, kind of took off and left. Yeah. And I love how when she walks in, you see all these stuffed animals. Yeah. And she's like, what are those for? And the doctor's like, for some of our younger patients. Sometimes some of our older patients, too. And then it cuts to her holding the she's bear. Holding she's holding it. Like, yeah, she's, the... like, ripping <laughs> through this bear. Yeah. Um, so, funny enough, um, as, you know, he's doing all this, he puts, like, a spacer in her eye to, like, keep it open, which is so, yeah, it's so awesome looking. He doesn't like Remember it. Remember earlier when I literally just said, rewind it five minutes, and I talked about how I don't like needles and I don't like eyeball stuff? Mm -hmm. This movie got me on both of them. For sure. Um, so he's doing all that. She's holding the bear. She's squeezing it, and the bear's eyeball pops off onto the ground. So we'll we'll come back to that. Um, mm. Yeah. So he is looking through her chart, and he's realizing he doesn't have 
all her stuff all, everything that he needs so he leaves which is weird like why are you leaving her with this thing in your you know i would be like no do not leave me but she, she are you leaving yeah you know like he again th this is one part of the movie where i'm like no professional doctor no. would have left a machine running and left to go get a chart right it, it would not have happened so he walks by one of the big water jugs um and this is where you see the water spilling out onto the um the electrical, electrical outlet, outlet. Mm -hmm. um sparking causing everything to uh like go haywire pretty mm -hmm. much and this is when the laser it just keeps heating up and heating up and heating up and Olivia knows something's going on, so she's she's in her head is I forgot to say this her head is um confined and like yeah this. it's it's in a restraint so like when they put that eye thing in yeah so she can't move when she's getting the surgery her head has to be stuck in right. place so she's restrained her head so she's reaching over she's trying to get the remote for the laser beam and she drops it on the floor this is when it goes off it turns it on it it, it goes off into her eye it it it's really cool looking but. At the same time, it's it's it's, gnarly. it's cringy, yeah. yeah. Um, so she uses her hand. She saves her other eye with her hand, so that hand it gets uh, it gets the heat, the laser yeah, on it, it. Burns her hand instead of her other eyeball. Right. Um, this is when Sam and Molly they come in and they're trying to help her. She she jumped up. She can't see. We already know she can't see right. already. And now one of her eyeballs has been burned. So she can't really see or comprehend. And she's scared. She's fearful for her life. She can't really understand or see right. what's going on. So she trips on the bare eyeball and falls out the window onto the windshield of a car. And her eye pops out onto the ground. So now Detective Block, he comes to the eye doctors and wants Sam and Molly to tell him what's going on. Mm -hmm. Now three of their other co-workers are dead. This is no longer a coincidence. This is now a pattern. Right. Um, Sam tells the detective they were supposed to die on the bridge and something is trying to make that right. Detective Block is like, really? Like, that's all you got for me? That, that's what you had all this time. Mm -hmm. And this is what you've come up with. I do like in this scene, though, where he even says, I don't think you guys did this. Mm -hmm. I do not think you're doing this. But there's something else going on. Right. This isn't your typical, ah, uh, this kid's behind it for sure. Right. You know, this is not your, you know, Watson moment. This mm -hmm. is not your Sherlock moment. This is him saying, I know you're not doing it. But you know more but than But there's you're something telling. you're not telling mm -hmm. me. And I love that direction they took with Absolutely. this. Um, Sam stays over at Molly's house because she's scared, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and he stays up thinking of all night of his premonition and the order that people are dying. Um, and now this is the order that they're actually dying in now. Um, Sam realizes that Nathan would be the next one to go. He's mm -hmm. at the factory and he's fighting with Roy. With Roy. About his lack of respect. And Roy is upset about getting his hours cut in half. Uh, while they're arguing, a big heavy hook falls through the catwalk. Nathan is trying to get Roy out of the way when he accidentally pushes him. Uh, the hook comes through the chin and gets Roy killing him. Yeah, out this, the back of his head. Yeah, this Love looks it. really, really yes. good. Um, so this is when Peter, he's going to talk to Dennis, the boss, and he's telling him everything that they know. It's, you know, either you kill or be killed. And Dennis is like, yeah, yeah, okay. And when Peter leaves, he calls Detective, Detective Block. I think I really got something for you now. Peter's unhinged now. He's mm -hmm. been drinking a lot. Yeah. He's grief stricken. He's just, he's over the edge. He's fucking, he's gone. He's, he's, he's mentally done at right. this point. He's checked out. So he walks into the factory and he sees that Roy is di has died. Mm -hmm. And he asks Nathan, like, did you kill him? And Nathan's like, technically, I, I did, but well, it was he, an accident. He fights it at first. He's like, uh, yeah. uh, he's like, you answer me. You know, Peter being aggressive and right. unhinged. But he was like, yeah, it was an accident, though. And so he's like, well, then you take his life. Who's next? Who's the next one that's going to die? And this is when um, Dennis walks in and you see a flying wrench and it smokes him in the head. So Molly's worried about Sam. Um, you know, everybody's dying around them. Mm -hmm. So obviously there is something here going on. Uh, Sam tells her it's okay. Something saved me on that bridge and I'm not going to live my life in fear. And that, what I like about this is they're really dissecting this. He's like, you know what? Yeah, maybe death is after me, but something else saved me. Right. So maybe I can outdo this. I mean, he goes to his job. And now here's where me and Ashley argue. I think this is a throwback to Final Destination, the first one. I think that this is 180 backwards, Flight 180. Yeah. She uh, argues with me. So you guys tell us in the comments, is this a throwback to Final Destination 1? Is this 180 backwards? I, I just, just thought it was a little far-fetched, but, I mean, I can see your point. I was watching the movie with a magnifying glass. You totally like, were. 
Yes. Mm, what do we have here? So I think that this restaurant sign is a total throwback to 180 from Final Destination. So at his job, <laughs> um, there's a lot of danger around him. He's working in a kitchen. There's fire. There's big knives. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're a cook, it's a very dangerous profession. Absolutely. It doesn't get talked about a lot, but the number of injuries and deaths that happen to cooks over the year, very high. Mm -hmm. Um, so later Molly comes to the job after she, after it's closed, um, he makes her dinner and he tells her that he's going to take the internship. So they're going to go to Paris together, which is awesome. Like yes. I'm rooting for them too, for sure. We are rooting very hard for these two. We really we are. We ship these two very hard. Mm -hmm. Um, so Peter, he shows up, he's knocking on the door and Sam lets him in. He looks really dark. He looks drunk. Like he just looks like disheveled. He looks evil. He looks evil for sure. And he's going on and telling him about how he couldn't kill a stranger, but he could kill somebody that deserves it. And he believes that Molly deserves to be to be killed. So he pulls a gun out on her. Um, this is when Sam flips the table over and he falls down and they run into the kitchen. Um, this is, Detective we pan Black. over to D Detective Black. Um, he's getting ready to go in. To see, obviously, well, he's, he's checking out the scene because he's already heard that, you know, uh, is killer be killed. Right. So he's after Peter now. He, he's, he wants to know what Peter's up to. Yeah. Um, so Sam tells Peter he's not going to let him kill Molly. You know, you're going to have to kill me first. And Peter's like, well, that doesn't do me any good because death is after you too. Pe you know, Peter says that to, yeah. to Sam. Mm -hmm. um, and then Peter knocks Sam out and he turns all the gas stoves on at this point. So then a knife falls, just barely missing Sam. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter's telling him, he's almost mocking him. It's not your turn yet. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to die yet. Uh, Detective Block makes his way in the kitchen, spotting Molly, asking her if she's okay. And I love this scene because when you first see the detective, you think it's Peter. Mm -hmm. Like he just found Molly. You know, and she, you know, this is when the detective's like, are you okay? Boom, boom, boom. Peter shoots him. He shoots and kills Detective Block. And Molly's like, you know what? You got him, Peter. You got your life. Go. And he's like, I just killed a federal agent and you witnessed it. I just earned a life and I'm not going to spend it behind bars. So he continues to chase her, trying to kill her. Um, Sam comes out of nowhere, hitting him with an iron skillet, mm -hmm. that cast iron. Best way to cook your steaks, by the <laughs> way. Um, and Peter drops the gun onto a burning stove, mm -hmm. onto a hot stove. Um, the two of them are fighting when Molly tries to help Sam. Peter takes a knife and is going to stab her. But then all of a sudden, Sam gets him from behind with a giant metal skewer Great kill, not great looking. The 3D does not hold up to me. No, it really doesn't. Um, so Molly says, it's gone. You killed him. And he says, does that mean that I get Block's life? So the gun, it goes off because it's still on that burning fire. Um, barely missing Sam. So he's like, well, I guess so. I guess I guess we beat it. We mm -hmm. beat death. Um, so two weeks later, they're boarding the plane to go to Paris. You happy know, endings. Happy, yeah, it's a happy ending, right? Let's just cut, cut there. Yep, cut there. That's All it. Done. <laughs> um, no, this is when we notice the characters from Final Destination One, and they are fighting each other. They are actually on plane 180, flight 180. Yes, and um, I guess that coupon is actually going to come in handy after all. It's not 10 years old. What? Yeah, so this turns out to be a surprise prequel to the first movie, and this blew me away. Mm -hmm. Didn't see it coming, did you? Um, so another thing I want to talk about real quick, uh, right here you have the devastation of the plane taking off. Um, you get Molly's death, which is so terrible. You know, she goes flying off, hits mm -hmm. the side. Um, and then you literally watch Sam burning to death inside this plane. Mm -hmm. Um, this devastated me Yeah, when you, we watched it. You felt for these people, you know, they built these characters up and you actually... You're rooting for you them. You are rooting for them. And then the minute you see that it's Flight 180 you're like, and you see Devin Sawa, you're happy to see Sawa yes. again. But at the same time, you know, like, oh my gosh, they're not going to make it. And um, the ending of this movie made me very sad. Yeah. like the, Not the ending, but this part of the ending made me extremely, extremely sad. Um, my heart was broken watching this scene. I'm like, ah, oh, you've been rooting for these people and they're so great. And you actually thought that they did it. Mm -hmm. You thought they made it, but they threw that surprise twist in there, which I thought was beautifully it, done. It really was. It was a great twist. That's a twist. That's very twisty. And yeah. I love a great twist. I just don't like the fact that they died. No. Because I really enjoyed these characters, but. So we see the final scene with Nathan. Um, he's at the bar and there's some pictures of Roy and he's kind of honoring him. This is when another coworker comes up and says that. Roy had this enlarged blood vessel, and he was really a ticking time bomb, about to die any day. 
This is when the plane crashes through the bar and kills Nathan. You see his hand fly that, you know, Roy's life was only good for just a couple of days. So Nathan only bought himself a couple extra days. Mm -hmm. Um... So, like I said, uh, I really, really like this movie. Mm -hmm. um, I was not a fan of Final Destination 3. I really did not like Final Destination 4. I know there's people out there that did, but those movies were not for me. Mm -hmm. um, but this movie, I feel like, really wrapped it back up. It did. And I'm very excited to see the new direction they're going in with the HBO Max. They got the rights to Final Destination. And I don't know if they're doing a remake or, like, a requel or what they're doing, but we will be getting a new Final Destination movie here shortly in the future. Mm -hmm. Um when it comes to the movie, I'm, I'm going to give this, I'll give this three and a half skulls out of five, which doesn't seem like a great ranking, but in comparison to some of the other movies in this franchise, it's actually a very, very good ranking. I do like this movie a lot, um, and I would rewatch this again without any hesitation at all. Absolutely. So I'll go with three and a half skulls out of five for my ranking. I'm going to say four out of five. Um, I really enjoyed this movie. It was fun. Um, the character development was awesome. You really cared for some of these characters. Yeah. Except and for Isaac. The ones that they wanted you to hate. You fucking you, you hated. You did. Tony Todd was in it. Yeah. Um, so four, four out of five for me. Awesome. And again, we appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't seen this movie and you were like, screw it, I'm going to watch this, didn't see it coming anyway, still go watch the movie. Even though it's been spoiled for you, it's worth a watch. It the really kills is. are great. Uh, the acting's phenomenal. Um, so I can't recommend this movie enough. But until next time, guys, I am Ken Sledge. And I'm Ashley Sledge. Keep talking horror. Stay who you are. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys. All right, you ready? <clears throat> Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, ready for my company's and then Okay, let's try that again. Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, ready for my company's annual retreat. And my name's Ashley Sledge. I'm ready to go hit the balancing board. Beam. Oh, beam. Beam. Hold on. What? <laughs> Nothing. No, what? You. Like... Board, beam, beam, fuck, beam. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yep. Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. Ba, ba, ba. Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, ready for my annual company retreat. Fuck! Company's annual retreat. My company's annual retreat. Okay, let's try that again. Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. And I'm Ashley Sledge. Fuck me, man. Why can't I get this right? All right. Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, ready for my company's annual retreat. And I'm Ashley Sledge, about to go hit the balancing beam. God damn it. <laughs> what? I don't know why we can't get this right. I don't know. It's really not that hard. <laughs> Okay, this is it. This is the time. All right. Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, ready for my company's annual retreat. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I suck. <laughs> Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. And I'm Ashley Fuck Sledge. Fuck me, man. <clears throat> Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, ready for my company's annual retreat. And I'm Ashley Sledge, about to go hit that balancing beam. We are Sledgehammer Horror. We are. I'm going to blow my fucking head off. <laughs> I'm going to blow my fucking... I don't want to say these words anymore. <laughs> Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. And I'm Ashley Sledge. Fuck! Fuck! It's just so... Like, I have it. I know. <laughs> <coughs> Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, ready for my company's annual retreat. And I'm Ashley Sledge, ready to go hit that balancing board. Beam. I said board again, didn't mm. I? God damn it. Why do I keep saying board? <sighs> Now we have Sam going to see Peter at the gymnasium. Uh, you know, Peter's crying, not understanding how this could happen. Um, when in the distance, in the background, you see our Tony Todd, William. William. Um, the seven of them return to their, the seven. The seven. The seven.